Hi, in this tutorial we will be compositing with the newly introduced Smart Vector Toolset found in NUCAX 10. At the heart of the process are two new nodes, Smart Vector and Vector Distort. The Smart Vector node is designed to analyse movement in a shot and then automatically generate motion vectors which can be used to distort patches and textures on complex moving surfaces. The Vector Distort node reads the rendered motion vectors and then applies warping to the source imagery. Or for really heavy scene files, you can output ST maps for previews, then hook up an ST map node to do the actual warp. The warping is reliant on both good vectors from the Smart Vector node and a good reference frame in the Vector Distort node. As a general note, we will introduce nodes throughout the tutorial by placing the mouse cursor in the node graph pane and then hitting the tab key and typing the node's name in the pop-up window before hitting enter and then adjust the parameters in the properties pane. Before starting we're going to adjust Nuke's default project settings. To do this from the main menu select edit project settings and then you'll see the parameters loading up in the properties window. For the frame range we need to set this to begin at frame 50 and to end at 125 to match what we'll be using for the footage. For the full size format we need to choose HD 720. We can also set the project directory to the Nuke tutorial folder which you've downloaded. To do this click on the folder icon and then browse to where you've got the tutorial downloaded and hit open. Next we're going to read in the footage. Ensure that sequences is turned on and in the footage folder Select the footage and hit open. We can view the footage by pressing 1 with it selected. Scrub through and you can see the footage that we'll be working with. You'll notice that there's some softness to the footage. We can fix this first by adding a sharpen node. You'll notice that with just the default settings, if I toggle the sharpen on and off using the D key, the effect that it's having on our footage. You can further adjust the sharpen settings in the property pane. Next we need to generate the motion vectors. Add a smart vector node after the sharpen. By default it loads with an error and this is because we haven't generated the motion vectors yet. Click the folder icon alongside the file parameter in the properties pane and choose a location to write the motion vectors. You'll need to output using the EXR format. We'll call our motion vectors vect dot hash 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 for frame padding dot EXR and then hit open. Ensure that range is set to input. Next we need to set the vector detail. The smart vector node's vector detail parameter has a default value of 0 0.3. This parameter defines the amount of detail you choose to generate for the motion vectors. Increasing it to the maximum value of 1 takes longer to produce. For footage with low detail and little movement a lower value does work well but for this tutorial as we have time on our side we'll set the value to 1 for the best results. With that done we're ready to hit render. It will take a while for Nuke to generate the motion vectors so I'm just going to pause the video here for a moment until that's done. Once the rendering is completed the Smart Vector node doesn't throw an error anymore. We can view what Nuke's done by changing the channels to Smart Vector and then scrubbing through. Reset channels back to RGBA. Next we need to disconnect the Smart Vector node from the Sharpen and then add a Vector Distort. This will connect up in the Smart Vector input. 
Alternatively, you could just read in the EXR files that we've rendered. Create a read node, browse to where you've rendered them to, and in that folder, select the EXR sequence and hit open. And then connect the read node with the smart vector input of the vector distort. The vector distort node takes imagery from the SRC input at the reference frame specified in its parameters and uses the motion vectors to position the imagery throughout the sequence. If we look at our footage by selecting it and pressing 1, the frame where we can see that the source imagery will be undistorted is at frame 125. So in the vector distort parameters, set the reference frame to 125. Or you could alternatively just hit set to current frame with the time slider at 125. Next we'll introduce the image which we're going to be using. Create a read node separate from the network by clicking on the node graph and creating a read node. In the assets folder, select USB JPEG and then hit open. To help give the appearance that this is a 3D image, we will use an emboss node. Select the read node and add emboss. Press 1 to view it. Change the angle to 111 and the width to minus 10. You'll need to enter minus 10 for the width, as the slider won't let you go below 1. You can adjust these parameters as desired, and see what the effect of each does. To increase the contrast, connect a grade node to the emboss. Set the black point to 0 0.4, and the white point to 0 0.85. Next, we'll add a merge node. Set the operation to multiply and connect the A input to the grade and the B input to the read node. Select the merge node and press 1 to view it. We now have an image that looks a lot less flat. You could further clean up any problem areas anywhere where there's some noise by using a Roto Paint Nodes painting tool set. Next add a Roto node after the merge. Use the Roto's Bezier tool to draw around the USB port image. Marquee select all of the points once you've closed the roto shape and then press Z on the keyboard to smooth. You can then tweak the handles as desired. Once you have something that you're happy with, set pre-multiply in the roto node parameters to RGBA, so that we only keep what's inside of the roto shape. In the lifetime tab, ensure that lifetime type is set to all frames. For the vector distort node to work, you need to match the input formats between the footage and any added elements. 
do this by adding a reformat node to the roto and then set the output format to HD720. Connect the vector distort source input to the reformat node. Next, create a merge node. Connect the A input to the vector distort node and the B input to the sharpen output to composite the image onto the footage. Select the merge node and press 1 to view it. If you scrub through the timeline, you'll see that the image is now being warped by the motion vectors. Add a transform node to the network between the reformat and the vector distort. Set the time slider to frame 125. In the transform node's properties, set the scale to 0.1. Using the transform handle, we can move the USB JPEG to the back of the actor's head. Or you can just key in the parameters into the transform node directly. Next we want to rotate the image to match the actor's head tilt. We can do this by adjusting the rotation of the transform node. If you want to add additional elements to the compositing, you can reuse the motion vectors as many times as you like. To quickly add a second USB port, we can duplicate the transform node and the vector distort node, connect the transform node up to the reformat as before, and connect the vector distort to the smart vector. and then composite with a merge set to over. Use the transform to just adjust the placement of the duplicate. We can now hit play and have a look at our compositing. You may find that when the actor's head is fully turned, that the USB port becomes warped on the green background. To fix this, we will use a roto node and draw a roto shape where the problem occurs. Next, add a merge node and connect its B input. Set the operation from over to out and then place this merge node into the network between the vector distort and the merge. Create a second merge node and again connect its B input to the Roto's output. Connect that into the network between the other vector distort and the other merge node. And set the operation to out. Double click on the Roto node to bring up the Roto shape. And then every few frames we can just marquee select all of the points and just move those uh, to adjust accordingly.
Once you're happy with the results, then we can play through our compositing. To render out the footage, we can add a write node to the final merge over in our network. Click the folder icon alongside file parameter and browse to where you would like to output. You can then append the path with the file name dot hash 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 dot tiff, for example, if you wanted to render out to an image sequence or we could just call it final.mov if you prefer to output to a video. Once done, hit save and then click render. I'm just going to pause the video for a moment while I clean up my node graph so you can have a better look at the node network. Here we can see how the final network looks for our Smart Paint toolset workflow. When you render from the Smart Vector node, by default the entirety of each frame is calculated. This isn't very efficient when you know, for example, that you only intend to work on a specific area. The solution is to use Nuke's keyers or Roto tools to define the area that you need. This will speed up rendering and reduce file sizes. The easiest approach to isolate the working area is to add a roto or kia and then place it between the footage and smart vector. Draw the roto shape or key the footage around the area that you know that you're going to be working in. Then in the Roto node, set Primultiply as before to RGBA. Select it and press 1 to view. Then set up the Smart Vector node as before. Browse to where you want to output the files to. And then enter the name, frame padding and the EXR file format. We can set the vector detail to 1 as before and then hit render. You'll notice straight away that the rendering takes a lot less time because we're only rendering the portion of the frames that we're going to be working with. I'm just going to pause the video for a moment while this completes. Once done, select the smart vector, press 1. We can view the motion vectors by changing the channels to smart vector. Then we can just introduce this into the network, replacing the vectors that we had before. Set the channels back to RGBA. And then view the last node in the network, which is the right node. The Smart Vector toolset provides an ideal solution for both day-to-day -day production tasks such as removing branding and logos and dealing with complex shots such as face replacements, removing the need for trackers and camera projections. For fixing broken renders in CG, it's priceless as it saves huge render times in production or when revisiting older renders to add polish where the scene files are perhaps not available anymore.